Hello and welcome to the second installment of Programming Progress. We have a whole lot of stuff to cover today so let's get right on to it. The first feature I want to show you is more the player customization for the mod, which is being able to change the HUD type on the fly. We currently have two HUDs in place which are the green alpha and the orange beta. You might see the alpha HUD in place but I wouldn't hope on it since we might be at a limit. The next feature here is a re-implementation of overbrightening. Overbrightening originally showed up in Quake, and Half-Life used it during its alpha and one releases. The effect was broken since the Steam release and they never tried to fix it, so I implemented it here, and you can see what it looks like. This feature hasn't been perfectly implemented just yet. There's still a few glitches involving fog and water effects. I plan on fixing all of these, but I just didn't have the time for this video. The rest of this video is going to focus on a major gameplay feature that we first discovered in a old Half-Life photo. We're really proud of how this turned out, and I think you will be too, so let's get right onto it. So for your delectations, we have an air tank. Well, actually we have a fully working inventory system in the game now. So back to the air tank. I want to show its usefulness by not using it, if you get what I mean. I'm going to go through this section of apprehension without it and see how far I can get. All the air pockets are now gone and are completely covered with water, so let's see how far I can get before I start drowning. Well it seems we're off to a bad start, I'm already drowning, but I'm not going to speed it up, I'm just going to keep on going, see if I can make it. Alright, instead of just leaving, we're going to take the path on the right. See, we can go into that room, grab the batteries, and uh, get out before we drown. Aw oh, man, we're cutting it close. Let's see if we can make it. Oh. Well, that didn't work out very well. Let's take a second attempt, but with the air tank on us this time. And to make it easier to know what items I currently have on me, I'm going to have the inventory permanently drawn. Comments found within the code originally stated the air tank was supposed to have about two minutes worth of oxygen. I currently have it set up to where each time the player takes a breath, a little bit of the oxygen is used. Once all the oxygen is gone from the tank, the air tank icon will disappear from your inventory and you'll go back to your normal lung capacity. Our air tank gives the player about 15 breaths before it runs out, and given the amount of time between each breath, you'll have about two minutes of underwater time with the air tank. The amount of oxygen in the air tank is also finite. Every time you leave the water, it isn't restored like your lung capacity, so you'll have to pick up more air tanks in order to restore your oxygen. The air tank will also work with change levels, so you'll be able to keep your air tank with you throughout the game as long as you have air in it. Now onto the long jump. The long jump for the most part is going to be like retail, except we'll have the overload feature implemented so it can't be spammed and we might have it count against your suit power, but we're not too sure if we're going to do that just yet. Up next is our anti-radiation canister. Upon contact with radiation, this will give you 30 seconds of immunity from it. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to walk into radiation to show what happens when you don't have one equipped. Radiation is a time-based damage, so not having one of these on you will cost you a lot of your suit power and even some of your health. As stated earlier, I should now be immune from all radiation for about 30 seconds. Once that time is up and I have another anti-radiation on me, it'll automatically take that and make me immune. And even though I'm immune from radiation, I can still take other damage, as from like these soldiers here. Just like the air tank, the anti-radiation and all other items will stay with you during change levels and saves, so you won't have to worry about losing them. The next canister we have here is the antidote. Similar to the anti-radiation, the antidote will cure you from poison, toxic, and paralyzing damage types. All those damage types are time-based too, so having an antidote on you is a really good thing to have. Currently the antidote doesn't give you a 30 second immunity because it wasn't written in the comments in the code, but I might implement it just because you can lose all of your antidotes really quickly like I did here. Antidote 
The second to last item we have in our inventory is the adrenaline, which is quite a bit different than how it was supposed to be, but we changed it for a pretty good reason. But first, let's show what happens if you don't have one on you and you run into some enemies. So back onto the adrenaline. It was originally stated that the adrenaline was supposed to resurrect the player after being dead for about 3 seconds, but that isn't really possible, so we decided to make it if the player takes enough damage, he'll get a little health boost and will be immune from all damage for a small amount of time. The very last thing I want to cover in this video is the flashlight. The flashlight draws from your suit power, so you're going to need some batteries in order to use it. Which is why we decided to use that unused red battery as a super battery to give you a bigger power boost than the blue one. That about wraps up this progress update. I hope I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.